few months ago, William Schneider Jr. arrived at the Caps Media Center with an absolute treasure trove of Ventura history. Bill's father, William Schneider Sr., was a highly respected teacher throughout Ventura. For years, his hobby was recording on camera interviews and family histories with fascinating people all over the county. Recently, his son, Bill Jr., gathered together more than 100 tapes from his father's archives and working here at the Caps Media Center has painstakingly restored these treasures. Bill's new series, called My Father's Stories, explores some of the very early days of Ventura County. Most of the videos were recorded 20 to 30 years ago. The people, places, and stories Bill shares are part of Ventura's rich history. Welcome to My Father's Stories. These stories just keep going, and you keep going. You're like the Energizer Bunny the way you're into this, which is wonderful for all of us. Thanks to all of your work, we get to hear all these wonderful stories. Thank you. So, so who's next? Another pioneering family, uh, Margarita Holly Marsh. All her friends knew her as Peg. Peg's father's family came here uh, in 1890. And uh, he graduated from Santa Paula High's second class that was ever, ever there. He then went to Stanford, and after graduating from Stanford, he taught a uh, high school in Pomona, and that's where he met his wife. Uh, they moved back to Sadaqua and started farming with their father uh, by the Pepper Tree Canyon area. Uh, now, this was all government land at one time, and this land was unincorporated, and, and, and Peg's father, Peg's grandfather had to clear the land. They chopped, uh, they chopped down all the wild trees, they got rid of the sagebrush, and they had what they called mustard plants. And back then, um, as rumor has it, as legend has it, uh, the mustard plants would grow taller than a man st sitting on a horse. And a man sitting on a horse could literally get lost in the fields of wild mustard. And so uh, Peg's uh, great-grandfather cleared all this land in order, in order for it to be uh, uh, to be farmable. Uh, Peg's father was also very instrumental in starting the original Satakoy Community Church, which is located on Wells Road and Darling Road. It's that nice church that sits there right there. And it subsequently moved to the Church of the Foothills on Foothill. Uh, Peg's father was also one of the first members of the Satakoy Country Club. However, he let his membership lapse because he didn't approve of drinking and gambling. What a guy, a nice guy. Margarita Holly Marsh, and everybody knows her as Peg. Great, great story. And we're visiting with Mrs. Marsh, known by Peg yes. Holly Marsh. Yeah. <laughs> and her family came into this county, oh, a long time ago. But let's, let's talk about your mother, Peg. Well, my mother was a fish. Okay. But that's spelled with a C instead of a S. Oh, okay. And she was from New York, and she went to Pomona when she was about 16 years old. And my father, who was taught high school in Pomona after he graduated from Stanford, and that's how he met mother and uh, their romance started from there, and a romance that never ended. That's beautiful. It was beautiful. All my friends were envious of them. <laughs> <laughs> now, when did they come to Satakoy? Well, of course, Dad was here before. Dad had come down from the gold mining country with his family, and um, he was down well, he was in the second class at Santa Paula High School. Okay. The year after Grace Thill. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but I never heard about gra grade school, so I would think perhaps that was the year that he came. It must have been in the early 1890s. Okay. And uh, he graduated from uh, Santa Paula High School and then went to Stanford for four years. A lot of Stanford folks, or a lot of Santa Paula folks went Very to Stanford. Very much so. Still yeah. are. Yeah, still go. And, uh, and after, after the university, what happened? Well, that's when he went and taught high school down at Pomona. I don't remember how, uh, it was only for a year or so. Mm -hmm. And then he came back to the ranch and took over there. My grandfather was elderly at that time. Um, 
he had been all over. He chased gold from one end uh, yes. to the other. He yes. he got in at the tail end of the 49 rush. And according to that book, yeah. he'd made a fortune up there, but then he went to Australia to try it out and also ended up in Alaska and lost all that he yeah. had. Oh. So he turned to farming. Yeah. And do you have an idea of when he came to Ventura County, your grandfather. Well, he would have come at the at that same time, mm -hmm. uh, in the early 1890s, 90s, I yeah. think. Well, then, then your dad started farming, on Telegraph Road. Yes, mm -hmm. right. Uh, our family had the property between Franklin Branco and what's the one that's up there El on Elson. Uh, uh, up there next to Sharps. Ellsworth? Is it Ellsworth? Could be. Everybody calls they, it the Sharp Branca. Yeah, the, it was the Sharp Branca. <laughs> well, they, we owned all the property from there on the north side of the road. Yeah, up to Foothill. Because that was part of the, the Dickinsons are part of our family, mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. And, in fact, Mrs. Dickinson was my father's half-sister. Uh-huh. We have a picture of her in when the kids were in school. <laughs> she, oh, yeah. She was a delightful person. <laughs> yes, she was. Now, did the Hollies own above Foothill Road? Yes. Um, in my book there, uh, they owned what is called Pepper Tree Canyon. Dad cleared that property of the sagebrush and so forth, and he raised in a nursery, he raised the citrus trees and planted the citrus orchard. Mm -hmm. Not the trees that are there now, but uh, the original ones. Now he, he was in the nursery business, wasn't he? No, that was my uncle. Your uncle. Uncle, uncle Lee. Lee, yeah, okay. Dad's younger brother. He was a golfer, if I remember. Yes, yeah. right. Until right. about the day he died, almost. <laughs> well, yes, he was. Um, Dad uh, did... He didn't play golf too much, but he was one of the original members at Satikoy Country Club, and he uh, let his membership go because he didn't approve of the gambling. Aha. Uh -huh. That 20, <laughs> 10 cents a hole or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, Dad was, Dad was pretty straight-laced. <laughs> well, they were also... Uh, I assume founders of the old Satikoy Community Church and a congregational yeah, that, church. Yeah, that's rather interesting. My mother was a, a, a musician, played the piano beautifully, and uh, she played for all of the Estedford choruses mm -hmm. and so forth. And when the community church put in the pipe organ, mother was the first one to play it. She took pipe organ lessons and they told her that she could go in and play anytime she wanted so she played for Sunday services so she could go over and play for her own amusement <laughs> and she loved it yeah. um, what do you remember about old Satikoy, downtown Satikoy? well I remember when the schoolhouse burned down In downtown? Oh, no, oh, up, up on the hill, up on the hill there. It was uh, an old-fashioned two-story schoolhouse, and one night in the wintertime, some hobo apparently was cold and <laughs> lit a fire and lit set fire. the schoolhouse on fire. So then we had to be sent all over town, and we, the class that I went to went to an old clubhouse down in Satikoy to, to end oh. school while they were building the new school. Yeah, after the burning, uh, you, the classes were where they were all, they were all out. over town. Yeah, and where uh, was this boarding place? Well, it stayed? was on the, the corner of Los Angeles Avenue and that street Fourth, below Fourth, Fourth Street, street. Mm -hmm. and they called it a clubhouse, but mm -hmm. I don't know what it was, mm -hmm. but it was a two-story building. Yeah, who were who were your teachers that you remember in mm -hmm. grade school? Yeah. I really don't remember the grade school teacher outside of Esther Cummings. Yeah. And I remember Mr. Faxon. Yes. And let's see who else. Was oh, one. <laughs> is this going to be public? <laughs> one that I hated. <laughs> sure. Her name is Smith. Oh. 
I, we didn't, I don't remember. She, she married Skillings and Oxnard. Okay, yes. The, the, old, the yes. Smith family up she, on Wells Road. She has just gone the last she four flunked, or five years. She flunked me. <laughs> 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 what happened was that when I was in the fourth grade, the class was too small, too uh, large. So they picked about four or five of us and jumped us up to the fifth grade. Well, that's a pretty important grade with all your multiplication tables and everything else. And I didn't adjust too well. Yeah. So I had to stay in the fifth grade two years. Two years. Okay. <laughs> oh, this is Skillings. That's right. I yeah. that name. Yeah. yeah, Laura. Laura Skillings, yeah. Uh, do you remember Miss Vickers? Well, no, she was she was in the lower grade oh, okay. when I was there. Okay. I I did remember her because she was my brother's favorite teacher. Yeah. And Miss Peterson? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, w what happened uh, to uh, to Mrs. Mars after she got out of grammar school? Well, then I went to Santa Paula High School. You were that's right. You're in the Santa Paula district. Yeah. Well, uh that was a funny thing. Um Actually, I think we were in the Ventura district, but my father, of course, went to Santa Paula, and he thought that school was better. But then it happened that there were a whole bunch that went, and the school bus went clear down to Gill's service station. That's where they picked up all the Satikoy kids. They picked up all of the parties, and Jim, Sear remember Jim Series? Mm -hmm And I don't remember who else, and then they came back and picked up the Nichols, and us, and then the Sharps, and the rest of them that all went in. But we had to get uh, permission from the Ventura District to uh, go to Santa Paula. Yeah, that's that whole block up there. I don't think anybody went to Ventura from there. No. Gordon, I know Gordon, Gordon Gill was on, and Bob yes. Gill. They were a little younger than you. I don't remember them going to Santa Paula, though. Gordon, uh, did both they, of them did. Did yeah. they? I, mm -hmm. I don't remember that. But, um, well, after high school, what did you do? Well, I went to UCLA, mm -hmm. and uh, that only lasted a couple of years. I kind of frittered my time yeah. away. <laughs> so then, I could appreciate that. So then, my dad decided that he didn't want me to rust at home, so he <laughs> sent me to business college, and I only went there for a short time, thought I knew more than the teachers did. <laughs> so then I went out and got a job. <laughs> oh, that's great. You know, we have, a, we have a beautiful picture of your dad's new buggy, the family. Oh, buggy. yeah, the, the, the Surrey? Yes. Oh, wasn't that beautiful? Gorgeous. What do you <laughs> That remember? only went on Sundays. That was only driven on Sundays. That was beautiful. Yeah. And do you... Do you remember what year, more or less, that was? Well, that would have been about 1915, I yeah. think. When did do you remember the first car your family got? Y yes. It was probably a Buick. <laughs> Our family seemed to grow up with those, although we do have pictures of my brother in a Cadillac, but I think it was just to demonstrate, not a Cadillac, <laughs> a Packard. A Packard? I think it was just a demonstration. Was that the one down at, uh, was it taken down in Calabasas or someplace like that? Was there a picture? Oh, there I, picture? I, have, I have that picture with Walter Duvall. Yeah. Because uh, my mother and father were good friends of Walter Duvall and Jean. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do you remember about the community at that time that you were growing up? Well, um, you mean organization? Act activities and what? Well, of course, you know, people didn't run around like they do nowadays. They stayed home pretty much. But uh, the center of the social life in Satikoy was the Poinsettia Club. That and uh, a group they call the Embroidery Club. They'd go together and sew for the afternoon. But that was the extent of it between that and the churches. I don't remember any church other than the Congregational Church. I'm not sure. I don't know if the Baptists had moved in on us or not. I don't think so. No. 
and I don't even remember the Catholic. I'm sure they must have been there. That's That began as a mission about 1915. Oh, uh-huh. They moved that building. But I remember the old Catholic church that was down on the flats. Not yes. the Catholic, the Congregational Church. Do you? Uh-huh. I ran. We ran into one of the old pews. Oh, did you? It's being redone, and it's going to be uh-huh. put in the back of our Church of the Foothill. Oh, for goodness sake. Row. You remember the, the preacher, Dwyer? Dyer. D-Y-E-R. Mm-hmm, Dyer. Dwyer. And he had two, two children, Marguerite and Collie. Collier. I don't remember the kids. They were older than me. But uh, they moved with the church up to the new one. And they lived in that, the parsonage that was up at the top. I think the Catlins lived next door, but I'm not positive. That's right, they did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, What do you remember about automobiles in those days, early days? Well, I remember we kids had a Ford Coupe to go to high school in. Mm -hmm. That was pretty fancy. And I didn't drive in those days, but my brother, my older brother did. And we used to have trouble getting it started when it was cold in the morning. And I remember one morning he had to tow it to get it. So he had me in there steering it. Well, I didn't know how to drive. And I smacked into the <laughs> the Buick real, <laughs> and boy did he <laughs> cuss me out because of that. But I didn't know how to stop the darn thing. <laughs> how about the golf course? That was a kind of a gathering place for people. Do you remember when that started? Well, yes, I should. <laughs> because uh, my two brothers and the party twins and I had the first Christmas party ever thrown in the clubhouse, yeah. and it was when we were in high school. Yeah. Those are the great days. Oh, they, that was quite a party, and caused quite a bit of stir because <laughs> most people didn't go to clubhouses at that, that time. <laughs> we generally met at the Ebell Club in Santa Paula. That's right. But, uh, no, that was the first year. It must have been in 22, 23, along in there. Right after, shortly after World War yeah, I. Yeah, because that's, well, we built our house right after World War I, One. Mm-hmm. 1919. That's the plaster. Yeah. Yeah. Now, when when was the first house built there, the one, the wooden one? My dad built that one when he was first married. Mm-hmm. And uh, let me see. That must have been 1904, about 1904, the first house. And then we moved it down in the corner, and uh, the man on the ranch lived there for a number of years. It's gone now, but... It, it used to be where Chuck Hare lives now then, is that no, right? No, that was, that was the new house that we built in 1919. Okay, but the That's, original house, was was that its site also? It was right in back, back of that. Of, yeah, okay. All right. Yeah, Chuck's house is pretty old these days. But, oh, was it built well. Yeah. <laughs> but what, what was a school day like, say, in grammar school? Do you remember... Well, I don't remember too much. I remember at the old Satikoy school, they had, it was a pretty good sized playground and they had pepper trees all around. And uh, we girls would go out and play house under the pepper trees. Yeah. And uh, then I remember, it must have been after the, the new school, which has since been demolished, um, we got skates. And by that time, Telegraph Road was paved, and we'd skate to school. Well, we could skate down Wells Road, but then when you got down to the road that went up to school, that was a dirt road, so you had to take them up. And at noon, why, out in front of the school, there was a big cement square. Well, all the kids had skates, so we had a skating rink out in front of the school, (laughs) and you'd skate round and round out there. 
But, uh, well, on the playground, the boys played ball. Seems to me the girls did, too. Oh, and I do have pictures. We played basketball. I have pictures of the old basketball team up on the hill with Satikoy in the background. Okay, when, when you got home from school, what were your obligations at the house? Well, I was fortunate. I didn't have much. Uh-huh. <laughs> you had a hard-working mother. <laughs> well, bless her heart, she did put, her, put herself out for us. And uh, I think I had dishes to do, but I never did any cooking until after I got married. And uh, I don't really remember. Um, our house, when, when we had the little red house, it was very small. There was only about a bedroom and a half. And uh, for a time, the three kids were in the little half sure. bedroom. And it, when we got bigger, it was kind of crowded. And my grandmother lived uh, about a half a block in another house. So it was my, I had to go over and stay with her. She was alone by that time. And I went over and stayed with her at night because there just wasn't room in our house. What? was the evenings program well uh I me mean, now we you, know we turn the you tube read on. you read well i remember my my father gave my grandmother radio the first that we'd have well each night we'd go over there to listen to the radio and my dad would spend the evening seeing how far away what's stations he could get and you listen to all this squeaking squawking stuff but oh that was something was this a battery radio uh -huh. Uh -huh. used a battery but not not uh, the powered yeah. yeah but uh that was that was a big thing then it was the radio but before that you read that's, yep that's mm -hmm. what people, did was there any singing involved anybody do any singing well involved? Uh, singing, you know. Yes, uh, there were these uh, Stedford mm -hmm. uh, contests, and they practiced. You should know that because your father was such a singer, and my mother used to accompany him, yeah. and uh, she loved doing that. And uh, then every once in a while, I had a, a cousin who played the violin, and Uncle Lee used to play the saxophone. They'd have a, they'd come over and they'd have a jam session. They didn't yeah. call it a jam session, but that's what they <laughs> had. Music. And it was fun. Yeah. You remember the cattle going through town? Yes, they'd have cattle drive, cattle and sheep. Mm -hmm. Every once in a while, they'd be taking them down to the train. And uh, that was always exciting for us kids when they'd drive all of them down there. Right through downtown Saturday. Yeah. Well, I remember, wait a minute, one morning, I don't know whether it was the one in Santa Barbara or the one in Long Beach, we were in the car on our way to the terminal in, in uh, San Pedro to go to Catalina when that happened. And that's... Uh, we were in Catalina several times when there was quite a severe earthquake. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't remember much about them at home. All I can remember are those big walnut trees in the winter, whipping, yeah. being just whipped around like that. Well, I remember um, when we used to have to put the walnuts out to dry. Now, this shows you how much drier our years are because the crops were always harvested in September. It would start to rain, and we'd have to run out and pile the trays up and then put a canvas over them. That's right. And uh, it happened quite often. We never get a rain like that anymore. Rarely. <laughs> when you were talking about uh, what we did in school, um, you know, nowadays they don't teach so much of the three R's. We got an awful lot of that. I can remember penmanship. 
I had to do hours of push pulls and ovals like this to to learn how to write. I don't think they ever do that anymore. And uh, my grandmother tutored us kids so that when we started school, we entered in the second grade. She had been a school teacher, and so she uh, taught us at home, and we were able to just skip those grades. What do you remember about the train? Well, we were going to Pomona to spend Christmas with my grandparents. And we took the train to Los Angeles, had lunch at the Bay Company, and then took the P.E. out to Pomona. <laughs> the old red car. Yeah. That was a big trip for us kids. We knew how to get around in those days yeah, without yeah. Just, uh, causing too much smog. Uh, and and your mother and her beautiful hat. Oh yes, <laughs> I really miss those hats. Well, my my grandmother was quite a fashion plate, and so she apparently got it from that. But uh, that was always a big big deal for us kids to go down there because that was a big city. We got to ride the streetcars to go down and go to matinees, to the movies, where we didn't go to do movies at all at home. Okay. And you couldn't get over the line. You had to stay in your section. Yeah. You didn't go from one end to the other. Now, this was high school basketball uh -huh. high for school girls. For girls. Yeah. yeah. And, and you had... Uh... You played a league with uh, yeah, other schools? Yes, we played other schools. We played Ventura and Fillmore and Oxnard. Film, um, I don't remember whether they played Ojai or not. It was small. But, uh, no, that was our big competition. D did you, didn't you play against my sister then and Annie Probably Silva? did. Sure. Probably did. Yeah. Because I was always the jump center because I was the tallest. Yeah. <laughs> And I used to hate that. <laughs> <laughs> but those were good, good fun times. Yeah, yeah, they were. In fact, uh, the girls even had track teams in those days. I remember that. I don't think I was very fast, but I was a broad jumper. Yes, good jump. <laughs> yeah. Real takeoff. Mm -hmm. What other, a, uh, what other teams like this would the girls be involved in? Well, they were in a, in all of them, Bas baseball, baseball, basketball, right. and track, and uh, I think there was probably a tennis team. I oh, didn't, sure. That's I um, don't recall that they had matches, but I'm sure, that I think they probably went to the Ojai tournament. The Ojai tournament sure. was always yep. going at that time. Now, you said baseball. Is it what we would call softball these days? It was a big ball, yeah. big, mm -hmm. big yeah. ball. Yeah. But uh, were you the pit star pitcher? Or? No, I think I played out in field. But I remember it. I caught one on the end of the ah, finger here. Yes. And it was all swollen up, and my dad just poo pooed it. And we did nothing about it. Well, in later years, we found out the finger was broken. Had been broken, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, there's no pain, no pain in the game, right? <laughs> All right, but those are fun times. Yeah. Right? Okay. I want to thank you very much. We'll come back if we think You're, of anything else. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, uh, I, you just caught me off guard because I hadn't thought about those for quite a while. <laughs>